And the last product, and this is probably my most controversial one. Even when I was preparing for this video and I wrote this one down, I was like, Hiram, are you sure? Hello everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Whew, the AC isn't working, y'all. Pop Molly, I'm sweating. All right, let's cut the bullshit. Have you ever gotten tired of seeing skincare content out there where the person is like, oh my God, you need this product. You are a literal waste of human flesh if you don't use this product. Go die in a hole if you don't buy this product. Which might sound ironic coming from a skincare influencer because I'm constantly talking about all my favorite products that I love and sharing those recommendations with you. But I will say, I have never been the type of person to like the statement that you need this. You have to have it. Have Go buy it Go now. Buy it. Like, no, that's not the vibe. I have said you only need four steps in a skincare routine, but I don't mean it like that. It's fine, you can come after me, I deserve it. All jokes aside though, I think we're all familiar with the narrative and the push to buy as many skincare products as possible. Try as much as you can, you need a 10 step skincare routine. Now don't get me wrong, I do think that there are types of products that are necessary if you want to have a really good skincare routine, like a sunscreen or like a cleanser. And I'm primarily making this video because I know there are a lot of people out there who may not have a lot of money to spend on skincare and are kind of feeling confused when it comes to the products that they need to have in a skincare routine. The amount of people I know who don't want to spend a lot of money on skincare but own like four serums and no sunscreen is like astounding. There's just so much noise out there, so many products being shoved down our throats. And if you're someone who relates and you're like, Hiram, I really don't have a lot of money to spend on skincare. I want to keep it just down to the basics. Only use products that are absolutely necessary in a skincare routine. This video is for you. So with that, I want to talk about products that I believe you can live without that are not an absolute must when it comes to having a good, solid, and simple skincare routine. Now I already know that this video is gonna cause a firestorm in the comment section. I'm ready for it. <laughs> but I'm sharing these based off of my own experience in the skincare industry, as well as what so many dermatologists, chemists, and scientists have shared about the products that you really don't need in a routine. Now I'll preface this by saying, if you do use these products and you enjoy using them, amazing. I am so happy you love them. That's amazing. Keep using those products. This is not me coming into your skincare cabinet, violently ripping these products from your shelves and saying that you can never use them again. This is for my simple skincare routine babes that just want the essentials. So let's get into it. Product type numero uno. This is gonna make so many people mad, I already know it. James Walsh is gonna come for me after this video. You don't need a toner in your skincare routine. And let me explain why. People traditionally use toners in order to increase the levels of hydration in their skin. Toners can be really nice because they deliver really nice hydrating ingredients into the skin that make your skin feel soft and supple and just help to make sure that your hydration stays steady throughout the day. But when I say that toners are a type of product that you can't live without, nor. See, when it comes to your skin, there are so many different ways that you can increase hydration. And the most effective ways to increase this hydration is by using a really good moisturizer or by using a really good or concentrated serum. The reason why is that the really beneficial ingredients in these products are combined with really good base ingredients like the texture you feel with a moisturizer or the texture you feel with a serum that help to really increase the effectiveness and the amount of time that your skin can stay hydrated as opposed to a toner formula. Because most toners are water-based and when it comes to the bioavailability of the skin, okay, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm already getting way too complicated. Basically, when it comes to ensuring that your skin can stay hydrated for a long period of time, serums and moisturizers can really help to deliver that much more effectively than a toner. And I think a lot of us are used to the skincare education that was present like back in the 80s where toner was like an absolute must step of every single skincare routine. But toners in the past were traditionally used to help reset the pH of the skin because cleansers back then were just really strong. They really disrupted the moisture barrier and stripped the out of your skin and toners were a way to reset that pH and make sure that your skin wasn't overly stripped. Nowadays, however, most cleansers are a lot more gentle on the skin, which is why toners really just aren't as necessary as they used to be. And while they can be a nice addition to a skincare routine, you don't absolutely need to have a toner in your skincare routine if you're wanting to keep your overall routine really cost efficient and simple. Now I'm mostly referring to hydrating toners. There are toners out there that have like salicylic acid and glycolic acid, really good exfoliating ingredients. And I would consider that more as like a treatment product rather than a toner product. But if you're looking to increase hydration, and you want to save some money, honestly, I'd recommend just focusing on a moisturizer or on a good serum. And of course, I have some product recommendations if you are interested. For a serum, if you're wanting a good one that you can find at the drugstore, I recommend the Bioma Hydrating Serum. They're a really cool brand that I recently discovered that has a bunch of great ingredients and fragrance-free formulas. And this one has a really nice blend of not only hydrating ingredients, but it also has squalane, which is a really beneficial oil for the skin in order to make sure that you're not losing water through your skin, which increases that dehydration, but also just making your skin feel and look a lot 
more hydrated and rejuvenated. I also recommend the Ordinary Buffet Serum. Most of Ordinary products are very, very simple, but this formula has a lot of really good hydrating agents like hyaluronic acid, ferments, glycerin, as well as a bunch of really good peptides and amino acids to help fade and prevent skin damage. It's just a really good blend of a bunch of different ingredients. If you are wanting to kind of minimize your routine, it's a great affordable option. And there's a reason why it's one of the Ordinary's best selling products. Or if you're looking for an effective moisturizer, I really recommend increasing the richness of the moisturizer that you use in a formula that has good ingredients as well. One of my top moisturizers that I recommend in so many of my videos is the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Barrier Peptide Cream. This formula, the results, the hydration, and the moisture is just incredible. It works really well. It's one of the best formulated products I've ever discovered, but it is a little bit on the pricier side. So if you are someone who wants a more affordable option, I would say go with the Bliss Mighty Biome Cream. This is one of my recent favorite moisturizers because it has a similar consistency to the Skin Fix Moisturizer with a bunch of beneficial ingredients that focus on really deeply moisturizing the skin, preventing water loss while helping to nurture and repair the moisture barrier. I personally have combination to oily skin, but I've used this one during the day. I've used it during the night. It works really effectively for both and is a great affordable alternative to the Skin Fix one. Product number two, a hydrating eye cream. Now, while I do believe that there is a time and place for eye creams, like I personally do use eye creams. I use ones that have really powerful ingredients that help to fade dark circles, help with premature aging on my under eye area. I find that those can be really great because it's helping to treat a concern that I don't necessarily need to treat anywhere else on my face. But when it comes to a hydrating eye cream, in my opinion, I really don't think they're necessary. People like to say all the time that the eye needs a different formula than the face, that products need to be formulated in a very specific way to be bioavailable to the under eye area, blah, blah, blah. And while I do think it's good to use formulas on the under eye area that aren't gonna be sensitizing, when it comes to just treating a dry under eye area, I honestly think you should just use a rich moisturizer. The reason why is that eye creams are just more expensive, but do pretty much the exact same thing as what a rich face moisturizer would do. But the benefit of buying a face moisturizer is that not only is it a lot cheaper, you can also use it on your face overnight. You can use it on dry areas of your skin. It's much more multifunctional than buying a designated hydrating eye cream. I just think it's kind of throwing your money away. And if your eye cream doesn't have a bunch of really beneficial and powerful ingredients that help to treat the concerns I was just talking about, and it's just for moisture, you should just use a face moisturizer. Literally the ones I just mentioned, I use on my under eye area whenever I'm struggling with dryness. It's just more bang for your buck. The third type of product, and this might not come as a surprise to many of you if you've watched some of my reaction videos, single use cotton rounds. You do not need to use cotton rounds in your skincare routine for, well, a few reasons. First, I usually see people using cotton rounds alongside their toner or their essence. And to me, I really just feel like this is a waste of your product. You can apply a toner or essence just using your hands and patting them into your skin. And by pouring an essence or a toner into a cotton round before applying it to your skin, you're just like wasting a bunch of that product in the cotton round that you're inevitably gonna throw away. It's a way for you to have to repurchase that product much sooner than had you just applied it using your hands. Secondly, I see a lot of people using cotton rounds in order to remove their makeup. And while I do think it is necessary if you're using like a micellar water, for example, to have something to apply the micellar water to, I honestly just recommending finding reusable bamboo cotton rounds. Wait, reusable bamboo cotton rounds? I didn't mean that. Reusable bamboo rounds. You can find them on Amazon for a really good price point. I'll have some linked in the description box below. And also all the products that I'm talking about in today's video will be linked in the description box if you do want to support me in my channel because I do make a small commission from the links. So they're there for your resource, but as always, no pressure to use them. These are great because not only is it going to save you money by having to repurchase cotton rounds, it's also way better for the environment. You're not throwing away something every single day. And with these, all you have to do is just go through the whole pack, throw them in the washer and start using them again. Product type number four. This one gets me really fired up. Face mists. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that think that face mists are a necessary part of your skin skincare routine because they really just aren't. And overall, I have to say for like 99.99% of face mists out there, I just don't really like them. For a few reasons. First of all, face mists tend to have a lot of fragrance and a lot of alcohol in them, which can be drying and sensitizing to the skin, which is why for the majority of face mists out there, I just really don't like the ingredient list. Not great if you have sensitive skin at all. But also when you're spraying a mist onto your face, the majority of product dissipates in the air. It doesn't actually get applied to your skin. It just kind of floats off in the air, which means that you're wasting the majority of your product. And I know some people out there like face mist because of the hydration elements and will, you know, spray it into their hands or spray it onto a cotton round to apply to their face. But at that point, I'm like, why don't you just use a serum? Serums are going to be way more effective and you're going to get way more bang for your buck. So because of that, I'm just like, do we need face mist? <laughs> I get it though. It is a luxury experience. It feels very fancy to spray it across your face, but you really don't need them. And if you want to focus on hydration, just really focus in on a serum or a moisturizer. That's where your attention can really go if you're wanting to have just a simple routine. Product number... 
One, two, three, five. <laughs> Product number five, face oils. Now I know this will get some people fired up because there is a cult following when it comes to face oils, but here's my perspective on it. The primary reason people use face oils is in order to increase moisture in the skin. Oils can be really beneficial in ensuring that your skin is properly moisturized and nourished, and they feel very luxurious. But the thing is, a lot of the most beneficial oil ingredients out there can be found in really good moisturizers. And rather than using a face oil that only has like one or a few ingredients in it, I would personally recommend using a moisturizer that includes a blend of multiple oils that each work to make sure that your skin stays as moisturized as possible. And when I've talked to people who express that their skin is just really dry and they need face oils in order to make sure that it's properly moisturized, that communicates to me that the moisturizer they're using is just not effective enough or that their skin is losing a lot of water overnight. If you aren't familiar with a little thing called transepidermal water loss, I know it sounds really intimidating and confusing and complicated. I mean, I mess it up almost every time I say it. That's the process by which overnight we lose water through our skin, which increases dehydration, it accelerates aging, it can make your skin cycle of repairing damage a lot more difficult, and it's just not a good thing. Transepidermal water loss is not our friend. No, no. And if you are experiencing consistent perpetual skin dryness where it just feels like no matter what moisturizer or oil you use is just not doing the job, I honestly recommend focusing in on your night treatment. There's two main products that I really recommend for this. First off is slugging. If you don't know what slugging is, I made a whole reaction video to slugging TikToks and gave all of my thoughts there. So if you want to watch that, I'll have it linked down below. Slugging is when you use a really thick petrolatum based product on your skin overnight in order to prevent your skin from losing water. And if you're struggling with dryness, it can do wonders for your skin. And the best part is slugging is really, really cheap. It's not expensive. My personal favorite slugging product is the CeraVe healing ointment. It's really nice because it has a blend of ceramides along with petrolatum in order to make sure that your skin keeps in as much hydration as possible. And every time I've used this product, when I wake up in the morning, I'm just like, oh, glorious. But if you are struggling with skin dryness, is that bad, I recommend using a product that focuses on really repairing the moisture barrier. The Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief is one of the best products I have ever used in my entire life. I will talk about it until I'm literally in the grave, maybe even after. This product is so good at really repairing your moisture barrier, delivering so much moisture to the skin, helping to repair from skin damage like dark spots and hyperpigmentation. It's just one of those products that I find myself recommending in almost every single skincare routine when I talk to people in day-to-day -day life. It's seriously that good and I would a hundred times over recommend a product like that versus using a face oil. So if you are struggling with really dry skin, rather than having to find a new face oil, I recommend just boosting your moisturizer, slug overnight, and really focus on barrier repair. And the last product, and this is probably my most controversial one. Even when I was preparing for this video and I wrote this one down, I was like, Hiram, are you sure? Face masks. Yes, you can live and not use a face mask. <laughs> Let me tell you why. I, more than anyone, love a good face mask moment. I think it's very luxurious. It's really fun. Spices up the night. And you can see a lot of really good results in your skin. But here's the thing, you don't need a face mask. Face masks typically provide the benefit of exfoliating the face or controlling oiliness, clearing out the pores, maybe even giving additional hydration to your skin. But in my opinion, the reality is that if you have a really good consistent routine where you're consistently using good skin treatments throughout the week or every day, a face mask isn't really necessary. For example, if you feel the need to use a face mask because you struggle with breakouts or oiliness, rather than needing a face mask for that, you could just focus on using salicylic acid in your routine or other ingredients like niacinamide or benzoyl peroxide to help treat those breakouts and control the overall oiliness of your skin. If you're using an exfoliating serum a few times a week and controlling that dead skin cell production, you don't need to use an exfoliating face mask. For example, I used to be a big face mask user, like I would always use a face mask at least once a week. And nowadays, I mean, I'll be lucky if I even use a face mask like once a month. Because I have my regular skincare routine figured out where I'm properly exfoliating, I'm controlling the oiliness, preventing the breakouts from the products that I use every day, rather than needing to go in with a product like once a week or once every other week. Plus it's just way better for the health of the skin to use a very gentle but effective dose of these powerful ingredients consistently every day or a few times a week rather than going in with a really intense treatment mask every other week. You get what I'm saying? You get the vibe? Face masks can be so much fun and I still continue to use them when I want to have like a fun night. <laughs> I love that that's my definition of a fun night. Not, you know, going out to dinner or hanging out with friends or going out to party. A face mask. Wow, how pathetic am I? Face masks are super fun, but do you absolutely need them in your routine? No, you don't. I think they're a fun add on to your routine, but if you are wanting to keep your routine really simple or keep it as affordable as possible, you just don't need them. And if you are someone who's wanting to control your oiliness and get that regular dose of salicylic acid, I personally would recommend the Selfless by Hiram Salicylic Acid and Seek Help Pore Clearing and Oil Control Serum. It's the only salicylic acid treatment that I can use on a daily basis to really control those issues. And if you're someone who's wanting to regularly exfoliate your skin throughout the week, I recommend the Inky List PHA Toner. It's a great but very gentle exfoliating treatment that you can use regularly throughout the week and get those dead skin cells off your 
face without having to worry about it overly sensitizing your skin. Man, I don't know if I'm sweating because it's hot or because of the anxiety of these controversial takes, but yeah, those are all the products I believe you can live without. Like I said before, if you use these products and you love them, please continue to use them. I love that for you, but if you are someone who has sensitive skin and wants to have a more simple routine or you're wanting to save a little bit of money on your skincare routine, these are the best products to cut out of your routine. What do you guys think? I am really interested to hear your take on all these opinions. I am nervous, but so be it. I said what I said. And let me know if you guys want to see a video of me talking about the products that I do believe are the most necessary if you want a good skincare routine, because I'm happy to make a video like that. Thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.